What is up, everyone? How's it going? Thanks for joining us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're live. Um, we're, you know, we're drinking White Claws. We're having a good night. I hope you guys can all hear me okay. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, but basically, we are going to talk about, you know, this is our part two of our mentorship series. And last time we talked about candlestick patterns. Uh, we're going to just retouch on those real quick for those people that missed it or that need a refresher. And then we're going to talk about divergences, supports, resistances. Uh, how do you know if a support or resistance holds? Um, what is a divergence and things like that? Again, this is going to be a really nice basic refresher for people that already know about charting and technical analysis. And for people that don't know anything, this is going to be a really good fundamental basis. Uh, my buddy is joining us today, one of my in real life friends, IRL friends. Um, he wants to learn about crypto trading charts and all that stuff. He knows a little bit, but he wants to know more. Um, so he's on the line. He's going to be asking questions and things along the way too. So you guys should be able to hear him. Um, how's it going? Are you there? Hey man, what's up hey, everybody? Hey, um, can you guys hear my buddy? Okay. And I know we're a little delayed on the audio, so I'll wait about five seconds. And so everyone can hear me. Great. I want to make sure they can hear you. If not, I can repeat your questions. Um, but let's see. Can you say something again? Yeah. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. So I just asked in the chat. I think we're like 10 or 15 seconds delayed, actually. So it might be. A, yep, they can hear. Perfect. That's awesome. I'm glad it all worked out. I think you guys should be able to see me, too. Um, sorry for that. I know you guys don't want to have to look at me. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So last time we talked about candlestick patterns, okay? Obviously, our favorite candlestick pattern is going to be a hammer, dragonfly doji, all right, things like that. And basically, Bitcoin is actually working on a nice little hammer here, all right, on the daily at support. That's a good sign. Um, obviously, this is a hammer. You've got a nice long bottom. you got a top. It looks like a Thor hammer. Pretty straightforward, you guys. Another one we had was right here at support. Great look. Um, and obviously, you guys feel free to ask questions in the chat as well. I'll get to those. Uh, so yeah, that's one of our favorite candlestick patterns. At a support is a hammer. Um, you obviously have you know rejection candles as far as this. Like this would be a rejection candle. We would call that a gravestone doji or a... Uh, shooting star doji and the way that these are invalidated and a lot of new traders don't know this and new investors is that these can actually be invalidated by price action okay so yes this looks like a trend reversal candle all right it looks like price would drop after that but actually what you see here is price and bitcoin was like nah we bullish nope we're going up and what happens is we have a close above this level here and when you get a close above this level that basically invalidates this and says, nope, we're, we're going to go up. The market is saying we're way stronger, we're way more bullish than this. This rejection doesn't matter. And you can see here we get a retest and we go up from there. And when you see these uh, two, you know, these shooting star dojis broken above and closed above, that's a good sign that you're going to get a strong move upwards. So you can use that to trade different time frames. Um, but again, a lot of new traders, they get really set on one direction and they're like, oh, that's a shooting star doji. We're going to go down. We have to go down. And they don't think about the other side of the trade where as, as technical analysis, we're going to be wrong a lot. All right. And, and that's fine. It's totally okay to be wrong. Um, but you want to know why you're wrong. So if I'm just shorting this and I short here and it just keeps going up and up and up and we get a close up here and I'm still short and I'm adding my short, that's not a good idea. All right. If I'm short here, with a reasonable risk to reward, that's totally fine. And we close above here, I'm probably gonna close my short. And maybe I'm looking for long opportunities, okay? Um, so it's okay to be wrong. We're gonna be wrong a lot, that's part of the game. But you need to be able to understand when you're wrong. So that's a really good way to know. Um, as far as that invalidation level, which a lot of people don't know, again, we have another one of those candles here, right? And another one here, all right? And you see here, when we get a close above this one, we really rocketed, all right? We closed above this one, so that's basically invalidated. And you see we get a big, nice moon candle here. So for this candle, all right, invalidation would be below here. So if tomorrow's candle just drops and closes below here, we're probably going to see a nice down move to, you know, at least 50K area, 
Um, but for now, we would say, all right, this is a bullish looking candle. And we would consider that as long as it closes like that, you know, in 15 minutes. I, I don't think this candle is going to die here in 15 minutes, but you never know. You always have to be ready for all outcomes. So candlestick patterns. All right, you guys, make sure you learn those. Evening star is one of my favorites. All right, evening star or morning star. All right, whoops, morning star and evening star. Okay, learn those, study those. I'm going to highlight them here so you remember them. I'm a visual person. When I see stuff like this, it helps me remember them. So make sure you go back and review an evening star and a morning star after this. If you're taking notes, write that down. Those can be really reliable patterns on different time frames for tops and bottoms. All right. Um, bearish and bullish engulfing candles are other candles we talked about. And basically, a bullish engulfing is going to be a candle that completely negates the last bearish move. So let's see if we can find a bullish engulfing here. And right here, you're gonna see one. Let's zoom in on this, make it look nice and pretty. Oh yeah, you know, we, we love big green dildos up in here, all right? We can say that in these markets. We love big green, big green Bitcoin dildos. Okay, we love those. Um, anyway, I hope you're, uh, you know, I hope your girlfriends and your wives aren't watching this and wondering what you're watching, but you know, most of us, most of you don't have, have girlfriends or wives anyway, because that's why you're here on Twitter all day with me. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's see, especially a uh, Nico's crypto. Uh, so I really wish he was watching this. I bet he's not, but we can make sure to plug him later. So anyway, you guys, here's a bullish engulfing candle. Okay. Um, technically, all right. So this is what I like technicalities and I like to teach this because technically this is not a bullish engulfing candle because for a bullish engulfing candle, you actually need this whole wick to to engulf this whole wick down here. All right. So technically, this wouldn't be bullish engulfing, but this is a pretty clean. What we see here is this whole candle is bigger than this whole than this cell candle, and that would technically be what we call bullish engulfing. Um, you see it here again. We didn't get this whole wick engulfed. So let's find a really clean textbook version of one of these. Um, just so I can show you guys what it looks like. And then we're going to move on to divergences. All right. Um, again, I like clean textbook. Those are really, the, that'll give you a really good confirmation, but in crypto, not everything's always clean in textbook. All right. So you have to understand that as well. And especially our engulfing candles, they aren't always picture perfect. Um, but a lot of times they're pretty close. So again, we basically have a bullish engulfing here and you can see price goes up. And you know, I don't we're on the daily chart, we're not getting too many clean ones. Again, another bullish engulfing and price goes up. Um we'll get you'll see them a lot on other time frames. So here's a really good if you invert this, here's a very good textbook bearish engulfing. Now, price didn't go down, it was invalidated technically. Um, but let's just stick with this real quick. So this would be a bearish engulfing candle. You can see that this wick engulfs this whole wick, this whole candle body engulfs this whole candle body, and then we're obviously below that wick as well. Um, maybe this is a good, nope. See, I'm trying to find a really clean one just to show you guys a really good example, but you know, crypto just really loves to hate us sometimes. It doesn't like to do anything too clean and pretty. Um, traditional stocks are a little bit more easily read, honestly. Um, we will, I can actually show you algo though. We do have a really nice monthly bullish engulfing on algo. I remember this. Um, and actually it might be on the Bitcoin chart. So I might have to go back to the Bitcoin chart. So let's go to algo or not algo Bitcoin on Binance. What's up Malik. Thanks for joining us, man. We're talking about bullish engulfing candles right now. And this is the absolute picture perfect bullish engulfing candle you can have. All right. This whole candle body engulfs this whole candle, right? and we engulf both wicks. This is beautiful, and not only that, but you get a close on this candle above this wick. So you can see here this whole candle and the wicks, right? and you guys feel free to stop me if you have any questions or anything. Um, but basically you see here, this is the whole wick from top to bottom, and this whole candle body and wick engulfs the whole thing. It's, it's really nice. This is what you want for confirmation. And back when this was happening live, one of my buddies, who is a very experienced trader, price is about here. And I said, hey, we've got a nice bullish engulfing candle on the monthly. And he said, I'm not convinced. I'll wait till it goes up more. I said, 
come on, man, it's clean as hell. And he said, no, I'll wait. So then once we got this confirmation, he said, okay, you're right. And you can see here what happened is, obviously, we got this BS rejection because crypto loves to hate us. But if you just caught this monthly bullish engulfing and just bought basically here anywhere um, after it opened, you would have seen some really nice profits right away. So, again, nice bullish engulfing candle. Um, Malik, I'm going to have to have you chill, bro. All right, on the chat. All right, have a mango. Have a mango claw. Relax, man. All right, up in here. Take your Adderall. You need to you need to chill out over there. Um, guy blowing it up with his Adda stuff over here. I don't know. Probably bought the top and trying to pump it on my on my stream. Um, so you guys, let's talk about. Okay, let us talk about divergences. All right, um, and basically, I like to use OBV, but let's go ahead and add. RSI, because you'll know Scott Melker, if you guys follow him, um, he loves RSI divergences, and I like to use OBV divergences, but they basically work the same, and there's also volume divergences, so we're going to talk about these as well, um, and somebody asks, what is the strategy after a bullish or a bearish candle, so basically, the strategy after a bullish or bearish candle would be invalidation below on a close below. So let's just say I see this nice bullish candle here and I'm going to long this. Just let's just say I'm going to long it right now after it closes. All right. So basically my invalidation point or my stop loss point would be below this candle. All right. A close below. Now we could wick below and still go up above and it would still be valid. But basically a close below here would invalidate it. So my stop loss would be right below this candle this wick okay and then my target would be somewhere up higher and we won't get into targets on that right now um, but I'm looking for again invalidations and remember what he talked about over here my invalidation points all right so that'd be my invalidation so again if I'm longing this candle my invalidation is gonna be below here and then my targets gonna be somewhere above there all right so you're gonna look for invalidations um, and no problem thanks for asking questions and Malik, sorry, I don't understand you because I don't know very English. That's okay, Malik. I will try to talk a little quieter for you, and you should be able to watch this video on subtitles afterward. Okay? Um, so let's talk again about divergences. All right, you can use RSI or OBV. And basically what a divergence is, is and let's go to lower time frames. We're going to get a lot more divergences. It'll be a lot easier. Um, but basically what a divergence is going to be, you're going to have a bullish and a bearish divergence, okay? And let's get rid of all this stuff here just to make it a little bit cleaner for you guys, okay? And what you're going to see here is, let's just use OBV for now, on balance volume. And what you're going to see here is some bearish and bullish divergences somewhere. We're going to find them, all right? And I'm going to find, I want to find a pronounced one so you guys can see it easier, and we're not going to get very many on OBV right now. Let's see if we get any on RSI. So here's going to be one. Okay. So we're going to look at a bearish divergence really quick just because I see a nice clean one. And what you're going to see here is that RSI is our relative, relative strength index. Okay. Um, there's It's calculated especially um, by candle closes. I don't want to get too into that, but please feel free to research it's really good to know how these candle how these indicators are calculated but basically what you're going to see here is we have this indicator this is our strength index so it's showing us strength of the market and it's showing us that strength is failing to make higher highs all right so it's showing a higher low or sorry it's showing a lower high here and a lower high here so basically price so strength is going downhill right strength is going downhill here as well and you see here price is going uphill, right? Price is going uphill, price is going uphill. Now, this isn't foolproof. It's not going to happen a million times out of a million, but you see here when price is going uphill, strength is going downhill, what happens soon after? You see a nice drop here both times after this on three bearish divergences, all right? So three bearish divergences is going to be stronger than two bearish divergences. So these first two here, you can see that if you just traded these first two as maybe a short or maybe you sold, you would see that it played out and they had nice little drops. Okay. But these third ones are the ones that even saw bigger drops. So you had nice bigger drops. 
Okay, so that's going to be a traditional bearish divergence. All right, um, it's pretty straightforward. And again, you're going to see this. All right, and we're not going to get too far into the technicals of this. I just want to really make you guys help you guys understand what a bearish divergence is, and we'll show you bullish divergences as well. Um, but you can see here that as price goes up, our strength is going down, and again, we reject at some point. All right, and our divergences are always going to be stronger in the upper zones and the lower zones. Oh, sorry, I just had to reply to somebody real quick. All right, I was trying to get help from somebody with my uh, technical difficulties, which we got fixed. All right, so very simple bearish divergence. At some point, you expect price to drop. And then obviously it can create a bullish divergence and go higher. Now that is a regular bearish divergence. There's hidden bearish divergences. We'll talk about those later. Now I'm going to check out the questions really quick. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not going to do technical analysis on charts right now, you guys. I'm just going to, this is more educational based. Um, let's see. Why do you prefer OBV versus RSI? Um, I can get into that real quick. OBV is basically a is going to tell us how volume looks in the market. So, whoops, I don't know what just happened. So RSI is calculated a little differently than OBV. And basically what you can see here is that RSI starts dropping, but look at our OBV. It's actually continuing to climb until about here is when it really drops. So this whole time you're getting bearish divergence after bearish divergence on RSI, but it doesn't drop till here. Whereas on OBV, you're actually not getting really any bearish divergences until maybe here you might have a bearish divergence at the top here. Okay, so I like OBV, especially in trending markets. I like RSI, um, and if you guys are new to following me, um, you should definitely check out my RSI video on how to trade um, RSI in bull markets super helpful video everything that i've posted about that from the past um on weekly charts for bitcoin has been basically spot on as far as understanding rsi and how to use it properly and i'll teach you totally different strategies and totally different ways to use it that you're probably not accustomed to um, that'll really help you i think uh, but i like obv i don't use rsi very much i do like using rsi on high time frames i do not use it on low time frames hardly at all uh, but that's just my trading strategy. Um, so somebody said it doesn't look bearish at all, but how do I know if it would go full bullish and really go up or sidewalk? Um, I'm assuming they just mean um, like these divergences. Like if you don't have a divergence, you're probably not going to see price go down. So... Let's see if I can find one. Um, so like here, you just see price making higher highs, higher high, or RSI, I mean. Even here, you see this peak up here in this overbought, and then we keep going higher. Um, that's a, I'm, tr I'm trying to answer that question, but it's kind of a tough one. Basically here, so here's how how you know if it's going to go up or not so basically you see here we've got no bearish divergence we got our strength is up in this top zone okay and we have no divergences and then we basically just consolidate here and we actually make probably a bullish divergence here which i'll talk about in a second and then you can see our strength index goes up higher and we actually don't drop until again more bearish divergence here see how price is going up strength is going down that's a bearish divergence all right but again, OBV was continued to go up until here. So we actually didn't have any divergence on OBV until at the very top. We actually have a nice double top here on OBV right at the very top, which RSI basically lied to us this whole way up, whereas OBV did not lie to us until we get up here um, or maybe even here. So price usually precedes volume. So volume will usually lead price, which means that um, our OBV will sometimes lead our price action, which is really helpful. 
Please talk about the bearish divergence on the weekly, please. Let's go to weekly. We'll see if we have bearish divergence there. And then we'll talk, start talking about bullish divergence because we like bullish divergence way more, you guys. All right. So here you go. Here's a perfect example of why I don't like RSI. All right. We definitely have some bullish divergence. Doesn't mean that it, or sorry, bearish divergence. It doesn't mean that we're just going to reject and drop. Okay. We definitely have three bearish divergences right now. So we could drop soon. All right, we're still in this upper zone, which tells me we still have strength in the market. So imagine we get one more push up here. Just let's say that happens. And then RSI pushes down lower. That would be a very telltale sign to me that we're going to see a large pullback. All right. We're still in this upper strength zone. So I can't confirm and say we're definitely going, we would definitely drop here. Okay. Um, but there's definitely three bearish divergence touches here. You can definitely see that. But as we showed you earlier, look at our OBV. All right, our OBV is not showing bearish divergence. So our volume and our buyers are still in control is what that's saying. So that leads me to believe that we could see a pullback soon, but it's not guaranteed uh, because our OBV is strong. Um, so just glancing at this chart real quick, you guys, I could make an argument that we go see a, another push here. And if we still continue to have bearish divergence, then we might start to get our pullback then. All right. Um, if we had bearish divergence on both of these indicators, I would feel more confident saying we might have a pullback, but we don't. So at that point, it's like this is kind of a caution area, a red zone area where we kind of have to wait and see what happens. Um, and if we start to drop, you know, we have our daily levels of invalidation that I showed. Um, and if we don't start to drop, then we have to look for more divergences up top and be careful because this is a, a point that's kind of risky to start getting back in up at these levels when we have these divergences. All right. So now bullish divergence. Okay. And remember that was traditional bearish divergence. It's all we care about right now. There's hidden bearish and hidden bullish divergence. Um, and we can talk about those later. And I don't see any weekly bullish divergence. Let's go to the daily. And let's see if we can find some here. And I might not even be able to find any here. On I'm looking for RSI right now. Let's just go to the 4-hour. I guarantee you we'll find some somewhere. Whoops. Excuse me. All right. Let's see. So here we go. Here's a very nice 4-hour chart. Okay, I'm going to get rid of OBV for a second. Let's just look at RSI. And what you see here is one, two, three, three higher lows, three lower lows, and that is a bullish divergence. And you can see what happens here is price starts to break out and move up. All right. Um, now it's good. We wicked into this lower zone. A lot of people buy there because they say we're oversold is what we call that. I'm not convinced on that. I like to see oversold area come out and show strength and get confirmation. Um, that'll be in later videos, you guys. Uh, but basically, you see this nice bullish divergence. And if you missed the first one, all right, ignore ignore this over here. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right, you guys know, I guarantee you, if we went to Scott Melker's feed, he is posting this on his feed. So we've got a drop here, but a rise in our strength. So that means our strength is actually showing upside. So we're saying the market is actually showing some strength regardless of dropping. So it's a weak drop. Um, so basically what that means is that, you know, you're playing tug of war and the buyers are actually tugging harder than the sellers. And that we're about to see a rebound in the other direction is basically what that means. All right. Now, do we have the same confirmation on OBV? No, we don't. All right, so RSI signaled that before OBV did. Um, but that's a very clean RSI bullish divergence. I don't have the double confirmation of OBV, but what I do have on OBV is a really large spike here, which would give me some confidence to say we might go up. Um, that's a very clean bullish divergence, very simple. Again, strength going up, price going down, and you can see here it's pretty low sell volume down here too. This was our really high sell volume here and pretty low sell volume. So it's kind of telling you that sellers, we're, we're running out of sellers, 
like you see here high sell volume you go lower lower sell volume you go lower even lower sell volume so that means sellers are running dry and when sellers run dry you're going to start seeing this buy volume come back because that means more buyers are coming in uh, somebody just asked <clears throat> what does overbought mean so it doesn't mean anything all right you guys what you'll hear overbought and oversold is basically when our RSI is up here, people say it's overbought. And when it's down here, they say it's oversold. All right. Doesn't mean much because your RSI is at 24 here, 25. I've seen it go as low as two before on something that bounced. So if you're buying just because it's oversold and it keeps going lower and lower and lower and price keeps going lower and it goes down to two, you're going to be pretty underwater before it bounces. So, what you're looking for in oversold areas, this is oversold. It means a lot of people sold and price dropped and our strength dropped. What you're looking for there is strength up out of there for bullish divergence. And what you're looking for here is weakness down from here for bearish divergence. Okay. Um, so that's overbought up here, oversold down here. I really absolutely hate those terms. I actually do not use them. So if you hear that a lot, just ignore it. Um, under please, I'm telling you guys, watch my other RSI video. Um, it'll explain it a lot better. Overbought and oversold don't really mean much. Other than if you're looking to buy, you can start to kind of put these on your watch list when they're down here. And if you're looking to sell, you can put them on your watch list when they're up here. Okay. Um, but that really doesn't mean much because you can see we can be in this territory for a long time and continue to go up a lot. All right. And nothing's ever perfect, so we have to take things with a grain of salt sometimes and use multiple forms of analysis to really understand what the hell is going on. Now, here I actually see a really, 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 really nice bullish divergence on OBV, on balance volume. I mean, you guys see this. I hope you guys just, you should notice this right away, all right? Um, again, you guys stop me if you have questions. Um, but look, higher low here. Okay, so that means that price dropped, but the market was like, and again, OBV is is volume based. So this is telling me that buyers are actually in control here still. You see that we've got this big drop here in price, but our OBV barely dropped at all. All right, and what that's telling me is that we might actually might go up and buyers might take back control, and they did. Now, you see on the opposite end, we actually have a bearish divergence on OBV right now. And you can see why price is having a hard time pushing up because our OBV is making a lower high, right? Okay. And our price is making a higher high. Okay. So we actually, what that tells me is that we could get a little pullback here. And then depending on how our OBV looks, if our OBV just looks dead in the water and drops really hard, that would be a bad sign. If our OBV barely drops and price drops, then I could expect us to keep going higher, okay? Because this would more turn into a consolidation bull flag type thing, all right? You guys like bull or bull pennant, we could say. You guys like bull pennants, I'm sure. I guarantee you guys know what those are. And then we would break out of this bull pennant, all right? And now I'm just making up ideas. Um, but our, our major thing here is this bullish divergence, all right? So if I'm looking to buy and I'm being patient, this is where I would look to, to buy, okay? On this second touch of this bullish divergence. That would give me more confirmation to buy and I want to make sure I'm at a support area. So by the end of this, we're actually gonna put this together to where we're gonna say, okay, um, we're at a support and now I see bullish divergence at a support and that's when I wanna look to buy. Um, are you guys bored? Do you guys want dad jokes? What do you want? I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. Gunnar, when you look at the watch list, is there something specific make you want to jump into a coin fast to take some specific action? Uh, no. I never want to jump in anything fast. It's always patient. All right, you guys. If you look at it, if you pull up a chart, let's just say you pull up Litecoin and you want to jump in immediately, do you really think you're going to catch the bottom of that the immediate second you look at that coin? Probably not. All right. Take your time, map out your levels. You're almost never gonna miss anything. If you FOMO, if you pull up the chart and you cross out this shit and you pulled up the chart right here and thought you were gonna miss out, well, look, you didn't. Okay. Very, very, very rarely are you going to miss out on a trade. 
um, very rarely are you going to pull up the chart and price is going to be right here at the very bottom of this wick where you buy. All right. So just remember that, you guys. You're always going to have time to buy. And if you don't, let's just say price is here and you pull up the chart and you're like, okay, I'm going to be patient and it goes up to here in five seconds. Well, guess what? You could still find a buy entry or you can find a different chart to enter, okay? Um, somebody else said it's not bullish divergence on the OKEX four hour chart. So the OKEX, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is a different exchange. I like to use exchanges that have a lot of volume. OKEX, uh, Bitstamp, they have pretty terrible volume, you guys. So I mostly use Binance for my charting, for all charting, because they have the most volume, all right? Um, some people use Bitfin. I used to use Bitfinex, but their volumes dropped off. I use Binance mostly because they have the most volume and they're going to be the most accurate. Um, different exchanges, different volume makes for different data. Exactly. So I want to find the highest volume because it's going to be the most accurate. Um, and somebody asked, else asked what indicator I use to scalp shorter time frame. Um, I guarantee 99% of, of you guys know I use Top Goon X for that. Um, it's very reactive on low time frames. It's great on the one minute chart on high volume assets. So I only use it on Bitcoin and Ethereum on the one minute, um, but it's very accurate. Um, so do you guys understand what bullish and, ver and bearish divergences are a little bit now? Do I need to go more in depth? Does that make sense to you guys? Quick question. Uh, yeah. So when you're looking at like lower time frames versus higher time frames, is there one that's more accurate for these divergences? Um, not really more accurate, but um, like a lot of people like to see, like let's say, um, let me show you this. So you've got a bullish divergence on the one hour chart here. Okay. But a lot of people like to see it on like higher time frames. So they're like, all right, it's confirmed on the one hour, but I want to see it confirm on the four hour before I'm going to enter. Because the higher the time frame, the more likely it is to be sustained. Um, but not only that, if you go to a five minute chart, yes, they're going to be shit. Like they're not going to be very accurate. Um, you can see here, we actually had a nice bullish divergence here on the five minute chart. But overall, if you look on low time frames, it's just going to be a little bit more choppy on these divergences. So I would recommend one hour minimum for looking at divergences until you have more experience and you can kind of recognize which ones are validated or not on lower time frames. Um, and then if you go to the four hour chart, that's where you're going to really feel a lot better about them, especially if you're more new. Um, so if you're new to charting and trading, I, I more recommend four hour charts anyway. Um, it's hard to lie on a four hour chart because you have four hours of price action the whole time. Whereas on a five minute chart, a one minute chart, it's pretty easy to kind of have one random person push a, push a button with a big order and have it mess up how the whole candle looks. And the market can fix that a lot easier than a four hour chart, if that makes sense. Makes sense, yep. Um, and basically for you guys, a five minute chart here quick, just while I'm looking at this, these are the kind of shorts I look for because you've got this higher upper wick, um, basically an inverted hammer um, or like a shooting star doji or something like that like we had here and these make for good quick scalp opportunities or quick trade opportunities, okay? Um, and I would love to get more into that at a different time. Um, so let's talk about supports and resistances and I like to draw zones, right? When I do horizontal support and resistance, I like to draw zones because let's say, and you guys should know how to draw supports and resistance by now. Um, but obviously I can just look at this right here and say, this is a support, right? We broke up here. Okay. We obviously rejected here and this was a resistance and then we broke above it. Now it becomes a support. When you break above a resistance, it becomes a support. And then now you see that we bounced on it once, we bounced on it again, we went up, we broke through it, but we only had one close below it. That's a fake out to me. Next close above it, and then we retested it multiple times and kept going. So this is now a support, all right? So I like to draw zones because that helps me kind of keep my bias in check. And so I'm gonna go from probably here to here, okay? I could go to the bottom of these wicks too, but I'm gonna go from here to here. And basically what you can see here is I'm gonna, this would be my support zone. If we're dropping, this would be my support zone. And then if I'm going to trade, I would just say, all right, look, 
I just want to see if I can find bullish divergence into my support zone. So you see here we tapped my support zone, so I could have maybe bought there and felt decent about it. All right, and again, you can buy all at once. You can ladder your entries. Uh, again, I have some videos on that um, from my leverage trading series you guys can check out. Uh, but basically, for me to have good confirmation of this, and this is a four-hour chart, I would say, all right, we got a touch in here. I don't have any divergence anywhere, so I don't really have confirmation for like a safe trade. But what happens here is we drop into this zone again. We have some nice lower wicks, and I have bullish divergence. So if this is all I know, and I don't know anything else about trading, I can take a trade here once we have this bullish divergence, okay? Now you always have to think about risk management. Again, we won't get into that too much. I do have more videos about that. Um, but also, you guys, I talked about five minutes ago, this bearish divergence here, okay? A lot of people see this big candle and they buy thinking we're going to go straight up. We have this bearish divergence I talked about on OBV, and you can see here what's happening. We're starting to see a pullback, and Bitcoin's down about $200 um, since I was talking about that, or $300 even. So just understanding these divergences can help you keep your bias intact and not buy the top here. Because that looked, you know, when we looked at this a few minutes ago, this was nice and green and looked like it was going to push up. Uh, but we had this divergence here, and now we're seeing a drop, but we're also not seeing OBV drop very much, which is a good sign saying that if this doesn't drop very much, we could create basically not really a divergence, but we can basically say that OBV didn't drop very much. We have a higher, a low, a higher low, and then we can continue up again. Um, what else you guys got? Total has an inverse head and shoulders on the 15 minute. You're really looking at total market cap on 15 minute charts. That that's, I don't know about that. Um, I wouldn't look at 15-minute charts on a total market cap. Um, but does anyone have any questions right now? So if you can just identify a support zone and you can identify a bullish divergence, you can take a potential you know buy at this diver at, at that area, and it goes vice versa for resistances. Now. Probably gonna need to zoom way back to find a resistance, you guys, because we just have been breaking through all of them. Um, but let's say, okay, so we have a breakdown here, all right, and I'm hoping that you guys can define identify a resistance here. And I'm just gonna say that this is a pretty good resistance. You see, I have one, two, three touches on it, and we break down hard from it when it goes down. So this is just gonna be my resistance zone, okay? And what you see here is I just barely missed it the first time. And I hit it the second time. Okay, now remember the last time when we touched support, we didn't have any divergences, right? We just touched support, no divergence, and then we touched support again with a divergence, right? But now what you see is we have resistance with a divergence, okay? And we have a divergence on RSI as well, okay? So our on balance volume is saying that sellers are in control because price because on balance volume is going down. Our strength index is saying that strength is going down of the market and our price is going up. Okay, now how many of you would FOMO into this candle? Okay, saying that this is a breakout, we're bullish, we're gonna go way higher, and in reality we're at eleven thousand right now and price drops all the way back to ten thousand. Okay. So that's how we can use these indicators in our resistance zone. So if I was going to take a short here, I could potentially take a short up here, all right? With the understanding that it could go higher into my resistance zone, but as long as I had more uh, divergence, I'd be okay. But you can see here, this plays out relatively quickly. And then you obviously need to know more about charting to really understand this. Um, so a little bit more advanced tip would be as soon as we lose this, we're going to drop hard, and you can see how that happened. Um, so I'm looking through the questions here real quick, you guys. The RSI, the line below, it's charting the flow of the price, just a different way of charting the price from the candles. Uh, no. RSI is going to calculate out, and again, this is why, for those of you who are late, RSI is going to calculate out the strength of the market from like the last 14 candles, I think. So it's going to it's going to be a calculation of the recent strength in the market, okay? So if the strength has been a lot of buyers, RSI is going to go up. 
if the strength has been almost all selling, it's going to go down. Okay, and it does it with a weird for with a formula, um, and that's why you get this this uh, line here. Okay, it's with a formula, and that's how it how it calculates it. On balance volume, I don't even know how it's calculated. Honestly, I just use it as strength. If it goes up, the market is strong, as you can see here. If it goes down, the market's weak, as you can see here. I mean, that's pretty much how it works. Um, obviously, you know, it's not the end all be all, and we could see this go down and price still go up, but I like to use it. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit. It's more of strength. Think about it. A lot of people don't, it's called relative strength index. It's showing strength. So when it's going up and it's high, that actually means the market's strong. A lot of people think that when it's high, the market is going to be going to drop, but that's not the case at all. Um, so before you buy the support zone, you always wait for a confirmation that stopped going down and a reverse, right? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much right. So before I buy a support, I want to make sure that it holds, okay? So let's just say, you guys, I can draw a pretty, you see this is a support here, right? Because we've got a lot of buyers right here. So I'm just going to draw this over, okay? I like green for support. And you can see here that we dropped below it, all right? Now this is why you don't short support, and this is why you wait for candle closes. Again, we'll get into this later. Um, but what you see here is we drop below it. And at this point, this candle is going to look very ugly. Remember, at one point, this candle was nice and big and red and all the way down here. And that's going to look scary. Once it closes up here, that's actually a support hold on one candle. Now, the second one drops to the bottom and pulls up. And this is a second support hold for confirmation because I always need two candles for confirmation. That's always my rule. This is a nice support hold. So... If I'm not buying this one, which is fine because, again, you don't want to knife catch because if you knife catch here and this drops down and it keeps going, you're screwed, all right? Obviously, that's why risk management is important, but it's always safer and more comforting to wait for a candle to actually hold and have a nice lower wick. So when you're looking at support and you have a nice lower wick at support, you can feel confident that it, it will bounce, all right, especially if you have divergence. Now, we don't have OBV divergence. Okay, but what do we have here on RSI? Bam! Look at that. I guarantee you Scott Milker posted about that because he loves RSIs. All right, I like following him literally just because he'll post an RSI every once in a while and then I'll go look, or he'll post a divergence every once in a while and go look for a long or a short depending on what he posts, okay? Um, but look, so you've got, we've kind of got the trifecta here. We've got um, lower sell volume. So we've got price falling on high volume and then lower sell volume. Okay, we've got a nice lower wick. We've got support area hold and we've got bear bullish divergence. So that's pretty much the trifecta there to say, okay, can I buy this? Yeah. And then if I'm going to buy this, I'm just going to, you know, wherever I enter, I'm going to make sure my stop loss is down here somewhere. And I'm probably going to look for price to go back up to resistance, which is up here. And you can see here that's a one and a half percent risk uh five almost five percent reward all right and everything looks way easier when you go back and review it guys um it probably was pretty scary in real life when this was happening again this candle was way down here all right um probably people it, price was 10k people probably thought it was going to go to 9k and lower Pff, who knows i probably posted it was going to go to 9k and lower let's be real um but the point is here, as soon as you get this hold, and this is why I always try to teach you guys patience on Twitter and just to kind of wait. Like, you don't have to make a decision when price is here. Wait for the market to show you and give you some clues. And now you have your clues, and these are your clues. And you're saying, all right, I've got this divergence at support. That's my clue. Um, so, yeah, does this apply to all trading pairs or only against fiat? This applies to all trading pairs, Lev. So it applies to every single trading pair, every single chart you will see, which is amazing, right? Um, somebody said, Gunnar, you are awesome, and you're totally right. I am. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just kidding, you guys. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, I really just want to teach you guys the simple basics because I don't think many people do. A lot of people teach you crazy shit, a lot of crazy things, and 
you, you, you gotta be able to walk before you can run. Okay. I actually kind of use this with my soccer team. When I coach, I coach these young girls and they were a select soccer team. So they were, you know, their parents were paying a shit ton of money a year for them to be soccer players. And the thing is they didn't know shit. I mean, they knew shit, but they didn't know shit. That makes no sense. But basically what I mean is they didn't know the fundamentals. Like they didn't know how to make a basic pass to each other. They knew all this crazy stuff and how to do, you know, all this fancy shit, but they didn't know how to just make like a simple pass to each other. They didn't know the correct form and the fundamentals of it. And so if you don't know, like if you're trying to build a house and you don't know how to make a proper joint, you know, whatever those joints are called, I don't know. Um, cause I don't build fucking houses, but if you're trying to build a house and you don't know the proper way, you know, to put these joints together, then the whole house is going to be fucked up by the time you get to the top, right? So these kids did not know how to pass the damn ball to each other. So I literally, after a few practices, I said, look, you guys, we're going back to the basics. Their coach didn't teach them the basics. Went back to the basics. They actually got worse at first, okay, because we went all the way back down to the basics. They got worse at first, but once they understood how to pass the ball and just how to do the simple shit, all the more complicated shit they already knew, became so much easier so i really want you guys to know the basics all right it's you got to know the basics to build a really strong foundation so that that house doesn't cave on you all right um so here again just more divergences on both pairs I and mean, we have divergence on rsi and obv that's really good confirmation okay you see how we've got these bullish divergences here price is dropping and eventually we go up all right it can be a lot of divergences, and the more you have, the better. So, like, when I look at some altcoins like OXT, and I know you guys have seen my posts on this, and I see, let's go to the weekly here because, again, you can get stuck on these for a long time with a lot of divergence. Um, you know, maybe we'll go to the daily. Uh, let's see. So, basically, here we have it. So, we've got... OBV here going up for a long ass time. Okay, for basically from basically November to January, end of January. So we got, let's say beginning of December to end of January. So two months we've got OBV going straight up. And what do we have? Price going basically down. Okay, but like I told you guys, volume precedes price. So volume is going straight up, price is going down. What do you think is going to happen eventually? Now it's not guaranteed. But we got this big old breakout because buyers have been accumulating the shit out of this. And I was accumulating shit out of this. And we popped nice and big. Okay. That's what you see here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, draw this out. Straight up. Straight down. But our this is our OBV. And look at our strength index. Again, it is starting to climb. Bam, see that, okay? All the way from here, our strength index is showing up. Now we don't have really bullish divergence, but that's a good sign to see it climbing. And if you watch my video, you'll understand, the video I keep talking about, you'll understand why this 50 area is really important, okay? This area right here is really important, and when we're above this, it's better than below it. Takes notes, learn how to build a house. Yeah, you guys, if you know how to build a house, you can trade crypto, okay? It's basically rule number one. If, if, if you guys don't know how to build a house, then what the fuck are you doing on the stream? All right? Go learn that shit. Come back. And then you can trade crypto properly, okay? Um, really dumb question, but confirming... No no questions are dumb. We've all asked stupid-ass questions, all right? Um, I guarantee you, any question you've asked, I've asked probably even worse. Um, really dumb question, but confirming the lines going up and down below price candles show the volume of sellers. Yes. These are the volume of sellers. Oh, shit. Um, these are the volume of sellers and buyers. Okay. Um, and my chart, I hope it doesn't confuse you guys. Um, green is white. Red is blue. But basically, this is high volume. These, All this blue here. Or sorry. Again, with my on balance volume, you see all this high white here, which is green, is buyers. There's no sell volume up in here. So there's a lot of buyers here buying in here and then price goes up after, okay? Very little sellers here. Price wasn't going up, 
but our buyers were just buying and buying and buying and buying. And then once you run out of sellers and the buyers are strong, you're just going to keep going up. Um, <laughs> do I use GanFan? I do not use GanFan. I love GanFan. It's really cool. Um, but you got to be really good at this shit, you guys. You have to put this thing at a perfect 45 degree angle and I'm a fucking god. So clearly this is perfect. And look at that. All right, this is GanFan. Put it from this point, and basically you just short this shit when it hits there, and then you long this shit when it hits there, and you're going to be a millionaire in no time. And then you short this shit too, and then you long this shit, and then pretty soon you're going to be a triple millionaire, okay? All right, all three of your wives are going to be millionaires, and they're all going to be super happy, and they're going to give you mad Twitter cloud, Twitter cloud okay? Um, let's see. What other questions we got? Do Lego houses count? Lego houses do count, all right? Lego houses are fucking hard to build. Do you think we can use Fibonacci in this basic level to kind of confirm something, or do you think for now it would only make things complicated? You can use Fibonacci at sports and resistances, just like you would um, divergences, or you can use divergences at Fibonacci support and resistances. That's totally valid. I do have some simple Fibonacci videos as well on my YouTube. Go check them out. Um, again, you guys, I like to really teach simple shit because I don't want you guys to learn how to build the roof of a house you haven't learned how to build the bottom of the house yet for, okay? Um, we, we like to start out simple and then we build up from there. You got to know the basics before you can start getting into more shit, which is why everyone wants to learn how to trade on a five-minute chart or a one-minute chart. And I just don't teach that because you need a really, really in-depth, thorough class to learn that shit. And that takes hours and hours of practice. And there's me making a 30-minute video on how to trade one-minute charts or five-minute charts is not going to help you. It's going to, you're not going to learn what you need to learn in that time. And I'm not here to give you guys shit advice, shit, shit, uh, you know, tips and tricks and stuff. I want it to be good. I want it to be valuable. Um, do you think we use Fibonacci? Oh, I already read that one. How do you feel about the three day time frame? Three day time frame is great. You can use the three day time frame as well. Um, I was wondering if you use Fibonacci or not and how you use it. I do use Fibonacci. Please check out my YouTube for that. I use Fibonacci a lot with Top Goon X, the indicator I made. That's basically what it's based off of. Um, I also have a strategy on daily and weekly charts that I use Fibonacci for too. How do you trade price discovery, which we often find ourselves in lately? Volume, oh, on balance volume, and Fibonacci levels. Um, that can be for later videos. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to have to get going soon, you guys. Uh, but next video, we can touch on hidden bullish and bearish divergences, which, to be honest, I don't really like. But um, on Twitter, at I'm just giving all these guys free plugs right now. Um, his name is at my friends call me AP or at friends call me AP. I can't remember which one. Um, he taught me some really cool stuff with hidden bullish and bearish divergences. Um, I have a, have a really old video of that somewhere, but anyway, we can touch on that sometime as well, but hidden. So your homework from this is to go to go look up bullish and bearish divergences again to make sure you understand them. You can actually look up bullish and bearish divergences with volume, um, which is basically the same, uh, and the indicators should back those up. And then you can look up hidden bullish and bearish divergences. Honestly, like the first six months I started learning this shit, I didn't understand. Like, that confused the hell out of me. So make sure you really know what just a regular bullish bearish divergence is. Then you can go look up hidden and try not to confuse the hell out of yourself. When is next video? This is awesome, by the way. Thanks, Susan. I'm glad you enjoy. Um, we're probably, I, honestly, I'm going to try to do one of these every two weeks. So, at least for the next few months. When is the best time frame to use when looking for quick trades to hold no longer than a few days? Um, probably the four-hour chart. Most of those trades play out in three to four days or five days. Um RW Dean is a triple millionaire now just from watching this video, you guys. I'm proud of you, man. Um, regarding altcoins, have you found fundamentals matter? You guys, honestly, I rarely hold altcoins, okay? Um, altcoins, their charts go up, and then they go down 50% when Bitcoin drops 10%. I like to get in, in altcoins when they're hot and get out. Uh, I'm sure many of you that follow me know that for now. 
Um, there's definitely different strategies to it. If you buy and hold uh, and you get good entries, you can be outperforming somebody like me who just buys and then gets out after 100%. Um, great info. Can't wait to sit and dive in more. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. Um, I will be doing Tuesday morning videos from now on on Twitter. Quick, probably five-minute video just with some helpful information on different topics. I'll either let you guys vote on them or I'll just bring topics to the table so you guys can count on that. I've got some more exciting stuff for you guys coming on Twitter too just to add more content value for you guys. Uh, so I really appreciate all you following me and I really like to help educate. Uh, so keep following you guys. All the retweets, subscriptions to YouTube are super appreciated. I keep trying to pay you guys back any way I can. Hopefully, I can talk Trezor into giving me another discount and or giveaway for you guys soon. And um, also, I'm just going to look to do a little bit more giveaways here coming up in the next few months. So continue to follow me. Um, all the interactions and comments on my posts are amazing. I like talking to you guys. Um, I've met so many amazing people um, and keep up the positivity, you guys. It's really appreciated. Um, but does anybody have any closing questions? Uh, Chart Addiction is online with us. You can follow him at on Twitter, at Chart Addiction. He's my buddy who's just learning. Um, trying to convince him to post more on Twitter. And I'm trying to give him homework to post. And maybe you guys can learn from that, too. Um, but do you have any more questions or anybody else? We all good? Well, cool, you guys. I'm really glad you enjoyed that. Uh, probably two weeks, we'll do another one. And, you know, you know, I'll be on Twitter all day tomorrow posting random shit for you guys. So have a good night. Thanks for joining. Let's see. I love this end of this video. is just going to be me here standing, staring weird, you guys. All right, see you guys. Have a good night. And stream. All right. Are you still on?